book was to be an antidote to what I call junkie lit. Uh, most memoirs about addiction to chronicle the, uh, the hard years, the drinking years, the drug years, and then in the last chapter, the person kind of miraculously gets sober and says, trust me, life is better now. And I wanted to flip that on its head. So my first chapter is when I get sober, and then my life sober is the story. I chronicle that part. I chronicle how it's weird to go to parties, how I don't have my social lubricant, and I'm expected to uh, be in all these social situations that are new, and you know, I have fantasy relapses that border on the absurd, like, you know, someone holding a gun to my head and forcing me to drink, um, because that's the nature of this thing. And what I found is that being sober is its own weird, wacky way of life and worth writing about. When I went to college, like everyone, I drank a lot, and it was hard to discern that I was a problem drinker because everyone around me was drinking. But the truth is, I probably left college addicted. And when uh, my life started and my career started and friends started going to bed at a reasonable hour because they had to wake up for work, I didn't stop the party. I kept going and I found people who were willing to uh, party with me. And basically, I drank every night after work. I was a very high-functioning alcoholic. Um, until I wasn't, and that is kind of the inevitable story of addiction, which is that it's fun for a while, but it never, ever ends well. And so at around age 32, I went into a bar on a Sunday evening, and I walked out of a different bar the next morning at 7.30 and had to go to work at America's Magazine, Reader's Digest. And that was the moment when all of my kind of logic fell away and I realized I had a problem. Before that I had been, you know, trying to control it or having one drink per glass of water or only drinking as much as the person I was sitting next to was drinking. And then, oh screw it, I'd just get drunk. And uh, that morning when I saw the sun and I was surprised to see the sun, uh, that was it for me. Now, I've had darker moments in drinking. Uh, if you read the book, you'll, you'll read about some of them. But for some reason, it was that morning and the sun where I just said, I can't live like this anymore. And my life is literally unmanageable. I couldn't be a vampire and the successful journalist I had hoped to be. Uh, and so that kind of led me uh, to dabbling in a 12-step program and then eventually uh, committing much more fully to it. Well, for sure I was known as a, a kind of good time Sally around the office. I was definitely the fun girl, the one you could count on to go have a drink with. So uh, there was no secret that I was a partying girl. I think that some of my colleagues were for sure surprised that it was a problem, but the ones who became close friends uh, were not surprised. And in fact, uh, many of them had talked to me uh, over the years about my drinking. And I say, instead of having an in intervention, I kind of had, uh, you know, a thousand nudges instead of a showdown. And it finally clicked for me. Um, but it was um, on other people's minds before it was on my mind anymore. Here's the thing. If I were to have a drink right now, obviously I would not be drunk the moment I had a sip but my brain would light up <laughs> and it would be impossible for me to stop drinking. Uh, so if tonight I had one drink, maybe I would stop tonight. But then tomorrow I'd say it went so well last night with the one drink, I can do that again. And then the next thing you know, I'm drinking again. And believe me, I know this because I've tried this. I mean, for years, instead of quitting drinking, I tried to control my drinking. So what I've learned is that I can't even take that first drink because as soon as I do, wires crisscross, I'm gone. Uh, well, my life is markedly better, so there's a kind of nice before and after sobriety uh, that it 